this because nobody knows what HVAC is. Nobody in my company anyway. So it was an, made sense at least to do that. Who's in? Okay. So we'll do a very quick overview of what actually HMAC is, and then I'll show you, we'll go to Elixir. So HMAC is hash message authentication code, um, which is basically generating a cryptographic hash for a web request. So <clears throat> we take some pieces of a web, web request, the method, the path, uh, stripping off the URL base, the content digest of the request body, the MD5 digest, um, and the con optional fields, the content digest, content type, and date. Um, put all those together into uh, a canonical string at the top, and then you append to that uh, a signing key, like some shared secret, and then you hash it. Just put it through hash, which gives you binary, that gives you, that you can then base64 encode, and then you put that into a structured string which is like some preamble, in our case, ncsa.hmac space, your public key ID, and then your hash thing. So hashes are one way. So because they're one way, basically on the server, I'm going to calculate the same thing using the same publicly available pieces of data. And I will have confidence that the request I've sent in flight has not altered, right? So I'll know that you sent this request, a post to this endpoint with these parameters on this date. And I will have reasonable confidence because you use the same shared secret key I have that that request has not changed. So that is an HMAC. And then the uh, project itself, pretty simple. We have, we have a lib, um, have a doc folder because we did some, uh, I can't remember what it was, but I used one of the documentation engines to generate the docs for that. Um, so Ruby is interesting. Um, I wrote this. I wrote this gem, uh, this package, working off the engine yard. They have an HMAC library written in Ruby. So because I was using cryptographic stuff, I didn't just want to trust that my calculations were going to be the same as what somebody else's would be. So this is sort of an extension I've been working on recently, is which is writing accessing Ruby code for the test suite from Elixir. So uh, this just sort of defines some, some Ruby stuff and you define these methods and pass them into this, into these, uh, you know, call Ruby, Ruby classes from there within, the, within what you're doing in Elixir. What else? what else? So, ah, an interesting sort of conceptual error I had while writing this is as I was writing it, you sort of need to fire all your requests through something that looks like a web request and, you know, to make it reasonably trustworthy that your tests are, are actually testing the right thing because, you know, headers and things can sort of be marginally altered in flight, like capital, all caps, authorization can turn into all lowercase or you know, capital A authorization. Um, so I was writing all my code initially using the plug, uh, the Elixir plug, to do everything. And I used the Elixir plug to sign the requests and to check on the other end to sort of generate uh, the comparative string on the other side of things, uh, also using plug. And when we actually got to the point where we were deploying this into staging, kind of realized that you don't make outgoing web requests through plug. So had kind of like a you know dumb little ah, I totally forgot that moment. And then wrote uh, just a signer module that <clears throat> kind of takes all those fields from your request, does the appropriate things to them, and passes back the value, making it more um, manual than I want it to be. Like I don't have an integration with HTTP poison or Cowboy or any of the other actual libraries that you can use to make web requests. <coughs> that might be it. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's a lot more to it. Um, since you mentioned Poison earlier, one of the gotchas in this, one of the, the tricks, trick, whatever, um, 
when you add the body into the canonical string that you're then going to hash, you have to do it deterministically, right? Like the body you put in has to be the same every time. And Elixir makes no guarantees about the ordering of a map. So one thing I found is working with Poison for whatever reason, when Poison gives you your JSON encoded map back, it actually does it in reverse alphabetical order, which is just sort of a curiosity. I think probably the way they pass through it, it maybe just comes out backwards. I don't know. Um, at least like back reverse alph alphabetical order by key name. So I actually ended up using uh, the JSON library to handle the request encoding, but this was more of a fortunate coincidence that for simple enough maps, it works. I think really to be durable, if you're going to try and deal with like a multi-element, um, say 15 key map, you know, you would need something to sort that in a way that's deterministic and repeatable. In our case, our implementation of it is simple enough that in, in general the maps we're doing are like one or two keys. So there's a, I have a high, reasonably high level of confidence that um, that will work out for us, or has been working out for us. OK? Cool. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm curious about, you said you were um, using the, the Ruby version of this library as well to kind of test mm -hmm. the correctness of yours. Yeah. Were you actually like calling out to the Ruby stuff in Elixir? Or how, how is that happening? Yes. Uh, you can, let me remember where the file is. Um, All through the tests. Yeah. So you basically define these, this module, uh, this Ruby call module, which you can then call into these methods. You pass the parameters that you need. Um, and then in the Ruby class that you've, or in the Ruby module that you've defined, you know, it'll, it does some, it does the Ruby underscore and then the method you define. So in Ruby call, you're basically letting Elixir reach out to Ruby to run this comparison. So it'll generate the, the value that we're looking for. So it's actually using all the Ruby libraries and Ruby itself. Uh, through the system to where does export .ruby come from? Yeah, like, is that shelling out or is there some tighter integration? I believe it's shelling. I'm almost positive it's shelling out. And export ruby is export. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The package. Hmm. Cool. Uh, that version number. Also. <laughs> Now that we're done, let me increase the score. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, anything else? All right. Thank you. Yeah.